Hey everyone, Dr. Clark here. I want to talk to you about a, another autoimmune disease that affects women. Today we're going to be talking about celiac disease. And the very first most important thing I want to tell you about it is this. Celiac disease is not the only kind of gluten sensitivity. It is one specific kind of gluten sensitivity. And so let me kind of back up and give you the background. When you have an immune system reaction to one of the compounds in wheat, barley or rye, they can call that gluten sensitivity. Celiac disease is a kind of gluten sensitivity that progresses to the point that you have an autoimmune attack on your small intestine. Now autoimmune means that your immune system mistakenly turns on you and starts attacking uh, one of your tissues or organs. So in celiac disease what happens is that your sensitivity to gluten triggers a genetic expression, a genetic condition, that makes your immune system attack the lining of your small intestine. Now what symptoms can this cause? Uh, this is another very big important issue. I'm going to name some symptoms but I want you to understand is you don't have to have any of these symptoms to have celiac disease. And more importantly, if you've got celiac disease that means you've got gluten sensitivity and it means that you've got to lifelong avoid gluten. I'll talk a little bit more about some of the testing that they do and why I think it's problematic, but let me go through some of the symptoms. So knowing that the small intestine is the source of the attack, what kind of things can happen? Well, a variety of gastrointestinal complaints. Again, maybe. It's actually, there's new research to show that many, many people that have celiac disease, as diagnosed, as I'm going to tell you, don't have any GI complaints, but some do. So for example, they can include uh, diarrhea or constipation. Uh, you can have abdominal bloating or abdominal pain. You can have uh, weight gain or weight loss. Okay, those are some of the GI complaints. But remember, you don't have to have any of them. I'm going to make a big point of telling you that. Now, here's some other symptoms you can get from celiac disease. Now, these other symptoms I'm going to explain to you, they aren't gastrointestinal symptoms. They're symptoms related to other parts of your body. Now, how does that happen? Well, once you have one autoimmune condition where you have broken the tolerance for yourself, your entire body is on the menu. And there are a bunch of different conditions and symptoms that are directly linked to people that started out with celiac disease, but then got type 1 diabetes, or osteoporosis, or depression, or infertility. Okay, so here's some of these other things you could have. You could have irregular menstrual periods. You could have infertility, miscarriages, seizures, epilepsy, uh, uh, fibromyalgia. You could have uh, osteoporosis, I think I named that earlier type 1 diabetes, vitiligo, the list goes on and on. So that's a lot of different types of symptoms. And basically, here's the thing. If you have any type of chronic sickness, if you're chronically unwell, or if you have any of those things I just named, you probably have gluten sensitivity, even though you may not test positive for celiac disease. So let's tell you about how they diagnose that. Well, depending on who you talk to, there's a variety of ways you can diagnose celiac disease. And the medical community is overly fixated on celiac disease. They seem to be early, to the exclusion of the other kinds of gluten sensitivity that you can have. And that's just a mistake in the training. That's just a real mistake in the training. But here's how they do it. Some would say that you have to have a positive small bowel biopsy in order to get diagnosed with celiac disease. So what do they do? They go in, they take a sample of your uh, small intestine, they put it on a microscope, and they look for uh, villus atrophy or villus blunting. They look for uh, uh, crypt hyperplasia. They look for infiltration of T lymphocytes. But a lot of people that have celiac don't have that. Some people would say that you have to do genetic testing for that. And if you've got a um, HLA-DQ8 genotype, then that means you've got celiac disease. A lot of this stuff is just academic, though, because if you've got gluten sensitivity, who cares if you've got celiac? You know, it, it's just one flavor or the other. Another way that you can diagnose celiac disease accordingly uh, <clears throat> is do blood tests. And sometimes they'll do an anti-endomysial antibody test. They'll do it a, a tissue transglutaminase antibody test. And here's the big mistake that happens. A woman will go get these tests done and they'll say, well, you don't have anti-endomysial antibodies. You can eat gluten. That is a fallacy. That is not the jump you should make in logic. Just because you don't have celiac disease as evidenced by those tests doesn't mean you don't have celiac. And it certainly does not mean that it's okay for you to eat gluten. Now, there's a, currently my best way to test for celiac disease is to use Cyrex Labs. They have a really good test, but most of the time, folks, I don't even run that test because if you've got a chronic condition that no one's been able to figure out 
the longer you've been sick, the, the bigger the chances you probably have gluten sensitivity anyway. So the takeaway message is this. Celiac disease is a kind of autoimmune disease that does affect women, and you can get different types of tests done for it. And it may produce gastrointestinal symptoms or a whole host of neurological or endocrine and hormones, hormone symptoms. So if you haven't been tested, you should probably think about it if you want to kind of get the academic side of it. Or another way to do it is just to simply get off of gluten forever anyway. But either way, you should be working with a doctor that understands those points I was just making about gluten and celiac disease.